Welcome back to the workbench. Dave here, Scale Models Midwest. Hope you're having a great weekend. As you can see here, I got the AMT 1978 Ford 4x4 pickup truck completed for the most part. Uh, I've got one big item left to do for it. I'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, overall, built up into a really nice kit, I think. Um, it has some fit issues. It has some issues with the decals. I'll get to that in a moment. But ultimately, um, this is definitely a kit that I would say buy, uh, build it. Uh, as as I did, I took the 460 engine out of it to use in the Sudden Death Mustang, which I have over here. But um, and as a result, it doesn't have an engine right now. Uh, again, I'll be talking about that shortly. But ultimately, uh, I was going to kind of give you some tips on this one, uh, masking tips and what have you. Um, I sadly did not get a video of the masking part. I not only masked for the red, which is TS8 Tamiya Italian Red, but I also did the semi-gloss black from Tamiya on the hood of the truck, as you can see there. Now, how I ended up doing that was pretty straightforward. Uh, the model itself, after washing all the parts and just soap and water, I sanded it with 1500 grit and then 2400 grit, laid down three primer coats, very light mist coats, and then I sanded that with a 2400 grit so it was nice and smooth, and then I laid down the color coats. The first color coat, the white, there were three coats. I did two light mist and one wet heavy of TS26 Pure White Tamiya, and then on the back, the truck itself, I also painted a fourth wet heavy coat and then I let it sit for a few days. And after that, I masked the body using the instructions that they show here. And I went on ahead and after masking that, I shot three coats of Tamiya TS8 Italian Red. Uh, two light, one wet heavy. And then I let it sit for about an hour, pulled the mask off, and it worked out really good. It didn't really have any bleed through. Maybe one little spot there, but that's it. But uh, after that, a couple days later, I masked the top and shot the uh, couple coats of semi-gloss black from Tamiya. And what did I use to mask? Well, I went and got washi tape. Chris over at HPI Guys loves washi tape. And I went on ahead and I bought a package of these from Target. A couple of fit issues with the vehicle, one of which is the tires and rims. The tires are very soft. I really was hoping to use my American Satgo tires that I have had for about 25 years. They're a little wider, they're a little taller, but the 125th scale rims, they just slid right through these. So someday I'll use them for another kit. But these were fine, except the rims and the wheel backs, when you glue them together before pushing them through the tire, they still extend out about an 18th, 16th of an inch uh, too far. So what I ended up doing was I just pulled the tires towards the rim so it looks like it filled up the rim better, filled up the tire, but the extra stuff is on the other side. Metal axles, no big issue there. Just remember when you're building this one, whether it's the 4x4 or the two-wheel drive version as I did here, that that front axle the twin I-beam suspension is set up just right. I would recommend putting the metal axle in there as you're building it, and as it sets, then slowly pull that out. I had to still drill out a part of it because some of the glue got into that area where the, the metal axle would go through, but once I did that, the axle went in just fine, and as you can see, she's a roller. Decals, they were thicker than I expected, and they have not really responded well to liberal use of Mark Fit or Microsoft or Microset yet. Um, I've managed to get it to start conforming to here, uh, the panel lines, especially here in the middle. I actually had to use a brand new X-Acto blade to score the line, top and bottom, and I'm actually putting another coat of Mark Fit on there uh, when I'm done with the video here. So that'll help settle. It is starting to settle pretty well, but you can still see 
it's there and the decals right now are really soft so basically if you're going to do the same thing just make sure that once they're in place hit it with some mark fit hit it with some microsol or microset and then just walk away from it. i will say this if you're going to try and keep the same colors make sure that you're not deviating from which primer you used as you can see the kit i used white primer but on the bed cover i used black primer flat black primer so obviously the hue of red is different than the hue here it's actually closer to what the decals were but still it's a good 20 footer so it's not a bad deal <clears throat> ultimately nice little black wash in the front just paint detail here and there the bed or the tailgate comes down easily enough got that all set up if I looked at this and it could very well be me but on the other side everything looks like it was centered just fine there are two little pins where the interior tub fits into the chassis and then the body on top of that and it's in place just fine however as you can see they look like they're forward about a sixteenth of an inch than they are on the other side I made sure it was square it was trued up and it is so I don't know um, everything looks fine underneath as you can see here not a bad deal <clears throat> but it is what it is and as you can see I do not have an engine in it just yet the um, 460 I used again for sudden death I did consider using this one from the Torino Cobra but the transmission is just too small I also debated using uh, Boss 302 from one of my Mustang models but I decided against that so I'm gonna kind of think about what I'm gonna put in for an engine I got a couple of ideas I got a couple of parts box heroes that I can probably scavenge some parts off of but uh, ultimately I'll do that one of the other things I noticed is that this does not have any radiator detail so I will have to scavenge one for my parts box it also didn't come with a master cylinder it did come with a battery but underhood detail is rather lacking so definitely go to your parts boxes for that uh, again battery booster um, but surprisingly enough I didn't see an upper or lower radiator hose and like I said it had a battery but no radiator so I'll be scavenging those parts overall again it turns out to be a nice kit once it's built it's gonna be a nice looking shelf model you could definitely put some serious detail into this if you'd like I'm already thinking if I were to buy this kit again and I probably will when Hobby Lobby has them on sale again, 40% off, I might go back and snag one. Because I had three options in mind. One, I saw pictures of this one, uh, four-wheel drive with uh, white and green two-tone. That looked kind of sharp, kind of stuck out. I also thought about using the Mobius service box on the back. The Mobius service box on the uh, mid-60s Ford truck, I think would be a good idea. Good option for that. Might have to work on the wheel well a bit of the service box if I were to do that. And then uh, Joel Mendoza over at Iceman has a tow truck package now available that's for short box or short wheelbase ones. So if I need to get a longer one, I'd probably have to get the toolbox. So that's another option. I'm have to look at that. I would think the only regret I have on this kit is that I didn't get it done sooner. There's a group build going on right now. I figure I'd give a shout out to it. Craig over at Mump Modeler is putting it on. It's the 10th annual 48-hour group build. And if you search 2023 48-hour GB or group build, what have you, it'll be there. Or go to Mutt Modeler's channel and check it out. Started at 8 o'clock Friday. Well, it's almost 8 o'clock Saturday night, so I'm not going to be able to participate in it. But, again, it's just because I've got so much stuff on my workbench right now trying to get that done. Anyhow, uh, you got to check out some of this stuff. Blue Ox has got a dog in the hunt. I think Brian over at Got Fuels is doing it. Um, Time Machines, I believe, is doing one as well. Lucas C is doing a NASCAR. I think BG is doing one as well. Uh, Seamus over at See My BMW, he's built a 190 
Mercedes-Benz Evo, which I think are some of the baddest ass Mercedes-Benz that's out there. And uh, you've got to go check his out. I think it just looks sweet. And this is the guy that's always putting lights and stuff on his kits, his builds, especially his track trailer rigs. Um, super cool detail. Go check his channel out. Go check the other ones out as well. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope you're building cool kits. I hope that anything that we're doing is inspiring you to build better kits as well. And with that, we're going to see you later. Catch you next video.